I'm John Morris. I happen to be Robert Kappa's editor on D-Day. I was then the photo editor of Life in London. Kappa was a contract photographer for Life. He had covered several wars before he was assigned to cover the big one, which was D-Day. Just simply getting the film back was a major undertaking. It meant physically getting undeveloped film back across the channel to London, where everything had to be processed and then censored. I had been waiting all day Tuesday and virtually all of Wednesday for the film to come back from Normandy. The tension was terrible. Finally, about 6 o'clock, a messenger came to the office on Dean Street with a packet from Kappa, and then it was a note saying, John, the action is all in the four rolls of 35 millimeter. I ordered the darkroom to give me contact prints as fast as possible because we were under terrible deadline pressure. A few minutes later, a darkroom lad came running into my office saying, John, the films are ruined, and there was nothing on the first three rolls. But on the fourth roll, There were images, and I ordered them all to be printed. It's interesting, and I didn't think of it at the time, but there's one picture that stands out, and that's the picture that shows clearly the head of an American soldier as he approaches the shore. It never occurred to me until later that in order to take that picture, Kappa had to get ahead of that soldier and turn his back on the action, which is is quite remarkable and also as an indication of Kappa's courage. I think that photo stands out because it humanizes the invasion. There is a single man walking ashore. My deadline for life was 9 o'clock Thursday morning when a courier would leave Grosvenor Square with film bound for Prestwick in Scotland and from Prestwick to Newfoundland and from Newfoundland to Washington and from Washington to New York. That was the circuit that that I had to cope with. We just sent the film. We didn't have to tell them that we had lost most of it. I used to take the rap for having been in charge of that film-losing operation. Now I simply take credit for saving the pictures that survive. But we were so relieved when late Saturday night or Sunday morning we got a cable from Dan Longwell the managing editor of Life, saying, congratulations, you did a great job, and so on. Life was the only eyewitness that really was respected because there was no television. It was Life that gave people the sense of how things really looked. The Omaha Beach story as a whole was perhaps the most memorable of my entire lifetime, and I've been privileged to work through many important stories of the 20th century.